Hi, this is Tobi and in today's video we continue to code our time range breakout EA for MetaTrader 5. Let's go! Okay, so this is the second part. If you have not seen the first video yet, I will link it up here so you can check it out. And in the first video I also described the logic of the EA and what we are trying to code. Okay, so let's switch to Meta Editor and we start coding. Okay, so this is the code we did last time and now we go down to the onTick function here and the onTick function is called every time a price changes for our symbol. So here we code our range calculation and also the, range, uh, the breakout check. So we start with um, getting the current tick of the symbol. So we write a comment, get current tick. And first of all, we want to store the current tick or the last tick in our previous tick variable here. So we do equal last tick. And now we want to get the latest tick into our last tick variable. So we use symbol info tick for this. And of course our current symbol and our last tick variable. So now we always have two variables, one with the last tick and one with the previous tick. And this way we always can detect a breakout. So for example, if the price um, crosses our range high or, or our range low. Okay, we compile, no errors, perfect. Okay, so what we can do now is to check if we need to calculate a new range. So we just write, um, calculate new range if and now there are multiple options when we want to calculate a new range. So the first would be if we have a close time set, so our input um, range close is equal or greater than zero and our the last tick time is bigger than the range close time. So now we can use the last tick and we just write dot and now we get the time for, for this tick. And if this of course is equal or greater than the close time, so the range dot close time, then we want to cal calculate a new range. Okay, and So we just write a comment here. So um, close time reached, for example. Okay, but another option um, or another condition when we want to calculate a new range is, for example, if both uh, flags of our range are set to true, the high breakout and the low breakout. So we just write if range dot flag high breakout is true and if there was a, a short breakout or a low breakout. So low breakout, so this would be another uh, option. Of course we need to write the OR operator. So we we'll also write a comment. Um, both, both breakout are true. And another opportunity to calculate a new range would be if we start a EA for the first time and we haven't calculated a range yet. So in this case, the range dot end time is zero, for example, because um, at the bin beginning here, we initialize the range time, of course, with zero. We could also check the start time, but we just use the end time for this here. So we also write a comment. 
Um, range not calculated yet. Another option would be if the range and time is not zero, but um, we are now after the range. So there can be a situation where we calculate a range, but we have just a jump or a gap in the price history, in the price data, and we jump um, to a time after the range. So we did not um, get a tick inside the range. And in this case, we also want to calculate a new range. So the range end time is not zero. And the last tick time is greater than the range end time. And also our flag, if we had a tick inside the range, here this F entry um, is uh, false in this case because we have not entered the range. So we just write range dot f entry. Okay, and we also write a comment. Put some brackets around. We also write a comment. Let's say um, there was a range. calculated but no tick inside okay let's move this to the right a little bit and now we also want we also only want to calculate a new range if we don't have a position open. So this is something we will check later. So we just write it um, as a comment here, um, something like count open positions. We will do this function later. Count open positions is equal to zero. Okay. Okay, so and now we just check if we got the right brackets. So these are each uh, one possibility to calculate a new range, each line. And here we add another bracket and we opened, open up the if body. And let's push this to the right a little bit. Okay, and of course we need to close the body of the if statement. And now we can compile. And we have no errors. Okay, and now of course we want to calculate a new range here inside the if statement. Um, so we just call a function calculate range. And now we will code the function where we calculate the new range. So down here we just um, write void. This is the return type of the function. So we don't uh, return anything. We write the name, calculate range. And also we don't have any parameters for this function. So we just open the body, close it again. When we compile, there should be no errors. And now here we can calculate a new range. So let's just write a comment what the function is for. A new range and now the first thing we want to do inside this function is to reset all range variables uh, to the default state so we just write a comment and we set each variable to the default state which we already did here so the range start time is zero. Range dot end time 
is zero um range dot close time zero range high breakout is false range low breakout is false and range high is zero range low is a big number or maybe we put them up here okay and now the range flag for the entry is also false okay and i think we got this the order doesn't matter but it's I like it if it's clean and if it's the same order like we um, have here in our structure. High, low, entry. Okay. Okay, that's for the reset. Okay, now let's compile and we want to calculate the range start time. So, first of all, we need to define the time cycle. Um, I call it time cycle. These are uh, this is just the seconds of one day. So we set it to eighty six thousand four hundred. These are the seconds um, of one day. And now we set the start time. Um, here. So first of all, we need to get the start of the day. And then we can add our input variable um, here, range start time in minutes to this time. So to get the start of the day for each current day, um, we just use the last tick time and we subtract last tick time and modulo the time cycle so this will give us the start of each day here and now of course we just need to add our input range start time and because a time uh, the start time is a daytime variable here so these are seconds um, after 9070 I think it's Unix time. You can look it up. Wikipedia, if you want to know more about the Unix time. So our input range start is in minutes. So we need to multiply this by 60 to get the seconds. And this should give us our start time for each day. Okay, now let's compile. And we got some errors. Um, always take a look at the first arrow. So here, if we double click, we will jump um, right to the line and we can see we need, of course, dot time. Now we compile and everything is okay. Okay, so this will calculate our start time for the current day. But now what happens if we um, Calculate our start, start time and we are already past the start time here. Then of course we want to shift the start time to the next day. And if the next day is a Saturday, we of course want the range to start on Monday. So we need to sh shift it from Friday here to Saturday to Sunday to Monday. And in order to, to do this, we use a for loop here. And we do this for loop seven times. And inside this for loop here, we just declare a new variable, mql daytime type. And now we can use the time to structure to get the day of the week for our start time here. 
So we use time to structure our range. Uh, range start time and our temp variable. And now we can use the temp variable to just get the day of the week here. So we write another variable or de declare a variable day of week. And here we just store the day of the week. And now we can simply write a if statement if uh, the last tick time, which is our current time of the symbol, is greater or equal to the range um, start time. Then of course we want to shift. So if we calculate a range and the range start is here, then of course we want to shift to the next day. And also we want to shift if the day of week is a Saturday, which will be six, or the day of week is a Sunday. And Sunday is zero. So Monday is one and so on. Okay, so in this case, we want to shift our range uh, start time to the next day. So we just add our time cycle here to the range start time. And if the ne uh, next day is a Sunday, we shift again, for example. So this should calculate our range always uh, for the next possible um, point of time. Okay, we can compile. And I think that's it for the range start calculation. And now we can take a look at to calculate the range end time. So the range end time calculation is pretty similar. So we just write another comment, calculate range end time. And now, first of all, we set the range um, end time. So range end time um, is of course the range start time. And because we enter the end of the range here in, in minutes, so as a duration, we just need to add to the start time our input variable. And of course also times 60. So this will set our range end time. And again here, if for example the start time is before midnight and we have a long range duration and our range end now is on the next day and the next day is a Saturday or a Sunday, we need to shift the range end to Monday. So that way we can have a range over the weekend, over midnight and so on. So we just write again a for um, loop But this time we only need to shift a maximum of two times because we only need to check for Saturday and su Sunday. And now we can copy this here. Of course, our end time. And now a if statement if range end time. Or we just need to check the day of week, of course. So we use again the day of week. If that is six for Saturday or the day of week is Sunday, then we want to shift our end time. So range, let's range dot end time and we also use the time cycle. So this should shift our end time always to a valid um, date. So we don't have a range, range end time on Saturday or Sunday. And now we also need to calculate our close time um, where we want to 
close all positions and also reset the range. So we write another comment, calculate range close. First of all, we compile. And now for the close time, we use the same um, method we used for the start time calculation. So we just copy this part here and we paste it here. And now, of course, we can change this to close time. We want to get the start of the day and this time the start of the day from the end time. So we just change the last tick time here to range end time. And of course, here we want to add our range close time variable. Okay. And here the for loop, we only need three and we also need the mql date time variable to get the day of week for the close time. And here, of course, we want to check if the range close time is less or equal to the range end time. In this case, of course, we want to shift the close time to the next day. And also, if the close time is on a Saturday, we want to shift. And if the close time is on a Sunday, we want to shift. So to shift, we just change this to close time and we again add the time cycle. Okay, now let's compile. So this should be it for our um, range calculation. And now the next step um, is to check if this, if these calculations here are correct. And the best way to do this is maybe to, yeah, I think we just add um, objects to the chart so we can visually see here um, our calculated times. So let's do this. Okay, so now let's just create another function. Void draw objects, for example. Um, and in here, we will draw our start time, our end time, our close time, and later also the range high and the range low. So we always see um, what are the current high, the low, and what are the calculated times of our current range. So we will start with the start time and we just write objects, object delete, because Whenever we call this function, we want to draw a new um, start time, of course. And so that's why we delete the old one. If there is um, a old uh, line, we want to delete it. So the first argument is the chart ID. We just want to draw on the current chart um, and the string object name. So the name would be just range start and so we just write a if statement to check again if the start time is greater than zero so there is a start time calculated just to make sure and in here we can now write object create again the chart id uh, the object name, range start, and now the type of object we want to draw, and this will be a vertical line because it's a point of time in our chart, and we will draw a line just like this one here. Okay, the next argument, the sub window zero we want to draw on the main window of course and now the time which is our range uh, starts time and the price we can just enter zero here because a vertical line 
doesn't need a price. Um, okay, so this will create our object and now we want to also modify it a little bit. So we can call object set string and here we can set a short description for our object um, Change start. Um, now, what we want to uh, modify is the object tooltip, and we just enter start of the range, and now we want to do a new line. And we also want to display the time. So time to time to string. And the time is of course our range start time. And we want the format time date and also time minutes. Okay, so this will set our tooltip. And now we also want to set a color maybe. We can just do this by object set integer. And again, we write the name of the object. And what we want to modify. So in this case, if you want to change the color, We pick object property color and we set the color to, for example, blue. Next, we want to um, increase the width of the object. So object set again, integer. Let's just copy this. And here we can select width and we set it to two. So I think default is one. Um, so with two, it's a little bit more, it's easier to see. And then of course, we also want to set the line to background. So it doesn't, um, so it, it's not in front of the chart of the candles. So object, we just, and I think back, true. Okay, so this should be it for, for our uh, start time object. And now what we want, we can do is to check if this is working, we compile. And also of course here in the uh, calculate range, um, function, we need to call the draw object function. So we write a comment, draw objects, and here we call the function. Okay, compile again. And now we can switch to MetaTrader platform and we can check if this is working. So we pick our time range EA drop it on the chart and we have a start time of 600. So of course, um, this will set our start time to the current day and then it should shift it to the next day. So if we press okay, we can see a vertical line with the tooltip start of the range at 10 o'clock um, on the next day, because for the current day, we are, are already past uh, 10 o'clock. So this works fine. And the next day is also a Friday. So there is no weekend here. So now we can do the same for the range end time. And this we just copy and paste, 
maybe we call it end time and start time. Here we change the name to range end. And end of the range. And now, of course, end time here, end time here, here, color. Maybe we can use dark blue, for example. And this should be it. Now we can compile. And if we switch to the platform, we can see end of the range is 120 minutes after the range start. Two hours. So our range is two hours long here. And now let's do the same for the close time. Uh, range close and it's important that we always start the object names uh, with range because later we will just in the on init uh, on the init function we will delete all objects just with one call so if we start each object with range um, then we can delete all um, objects at once. So range close. Now here also close time. Close time. Close of the range. And the color, I would set it to red. And maybe we change the end also to the same color. Um, like the start time. Okay, so now we can compile and we can see our close of the range at um, 8 p.m. So now we would wait until we reach the um, range start, then a range would be calculated. Of course, we need to code the logic and then we will close the positions at the range close time. And of course we can try to change our inputs here. Uh, if we want to start at midnight and have a range until 10 o'clock. Um, okay, of course the values now are not updating because we already have a range calculated. So if we want to change it um, on the fly, we can add here in the on init function um, a if statement to calculate the range. If the on init reason is reason, and this should be parameters. So if the parameters change, changed, then we want to calculate a new range. So we just call the calculate range function here. And later we also want to make sure that we only calculate a new range if we have no position open. So we just add a comment here uh, so we don't forget to add this later. And we write a comment here. So calculate new range if input changed. Okay, if we compile now, we can see the range has updated. And if we change it again to 300 and let's do 500. And if we take a look at the range, we can see it's um, calculating a new range um, as soon as we enter new inputs. Okay, so for now we can remove the expert advisor again from the chart. And now we can see 
um, the expert advisor is no longer on the chart, but the objects are still here. So of course we can manually um, delete the objects, but we want to do this um, automatically from the code. So in the on day init function, this function is called if the EA is unloaded from the chart. So here we can just delete objects and we write delete or object delete all. And now we can just use, I think there's another, yeah, another uh, variant of this function where we can define the prefix. So we just enter uh, range here because all our three objects start um, with range. So this should delete all objects uh, if we compile. Now, of course, we need to clear it manually one more time. Or maybe we can just start the EA again. Yes, and now if we delete, remove the EA, we also remove the object. Okay, and of course, we can also try out a range um, over midnight. So if we say our range start is in the evening and we have a range uh, to the next day, if we press OK, we can see our range start is today and the range end is tomorrow. And also the range close and gets shifted to the next day. And to see this in action, we can also use the tester, of course, do a visual test. If we just press start, let me get this here. We can see our range is calculated. And as soon as we hit the range end, the range is uh, calculated for the next day. And in this case here, it's Friday and our range is shifted to the next possible time. So we can see the range calculation in action. So this is the weekend here and we already get the range calculated for Monday. So that's perfect. And now the video is already pretty long. So in the next part, we will code the logic to calculate the actual high and low of the range here in the on tick function here. And we also need to close our trades. Later, we will also add a stop loss, take profit and a day of week filter to this EA. So if you don't want to miss the next parts, um, you can subscribe to my channel. And if you have a question about automated trading about this EA or just in general, a question about coding um, MQL5, you can write a comment. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.